All right. <laughs> Maximized. Let me double check my audience view. Now, Curtis, if there's a misstatement yeah. from you or from me, since yeah. we're recording it, do we have the ability of saying, let's retake that part? Yeah, so if you mess up, I mess up, all, you, all we need to do is just, oh, crap, I screwed up. Pause yeah, for a second it. and good, then good, good. pick up from the last line. Um, Thanks, pal. No one can see your screen. I need to start doing this. Hold on. Um, I'm going to hit the record button. <clears throat> All right, I'll pause for a second. <clears throat> Hi, this is Curtis Hawks, Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer with IMES. And I'm very pleased today to have with us Jim Shilton. He's the CEO and founder of the Society for Financial Awareness. So, Jim. Welcome. We appreciate you taking the time with us today. Well, thanks, Curtis. It's always good to be with you guys. Absolutely. Um, so today what we're going to talk about is some some new ideas, some new ways to get out in front of your target market and generate a consistent flow of prospects. And so, Jim, uh, I know there's a lot of advisors out there that are aware of SOFA. We've started bringing some reps over there. But for those advisors that maybe aren't familiar with SOFA, could you kind of give us kind of a high level overview of who you guys are and, and what it is that you do? Sure. We are a nonprofit educational speakers bureau. We're a public benefit corporation. And there's absolute magic to being a 501c3 out there in the business marketplace. Uh, we don't sell anything. And what we do is we provide financial literacy to companies, places of worship, organization, unions, anywhere, Curtis, where people gather. And we created this. We're, we just started our 28th year of doing this. We're probably well over 12, 13,000 places uh, across America. And the, probably the best part of the whole deal is we get invited back uh, every year. And especially companies, because we fulfill what is called uh, the Department of Labor's 404C, providing generic, ongoing uh, financial literacy that's non-proprietary. And a lot of these HRs aren't aware of those two requirements, the generic and non-proprietary. So we come in uh, with financial advisors, estate planning attorneys, accountants, realtors, mortgage brokers, health and wellness professionals, and put on workshops at all of these different places. Okay. So uh, these workshops, so it's essentially what you're doing is there's a requirement, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, there's a requirement that the Department of Labor puts out there where there's some level of financial education that employers have to provide to their employees. And where the advisor comes into play is they can actually come in and present information uh, to those employees. Is that correct? Absolutely right. And it's for the records of the HR because if you've got um, a spot audit and someone comes in and they see that you've got the fidelity lady coming out on a quarterly basis to do the, um, you know, the, the 401k pitch, if you will. Mm -hmm. And they're going, well, that sounds wonderful. And, and we're glad to see your employees participating. But our question is, what is the generic information? Since all the information is coming from proprietary products of Fidelity, what's your generic information? What are you providing that is non-proprietary for the employees? And that's where they get drilled. Yeah, no, absolutely. So uh, businesses throughout the country uh, have been impacted by COVID. Uh, our advisors have businesses and in all industries, everyone has. So from that perspective, uh, going into last year and then this year, what are some things that you've had to transition or modify uh, to be able to continue to operate the way that you guys have been? Well, I have to say, um, we I don't think we've really missed a beat in what we do. 
uh, of promoting SOFA. People love the idea of a non-sales environment, strictly educational, it's fun, it's interesting, it's entertaining. Now, of course, we use any meeting and Zoom and like everybody else, but <clears throat> I think, Curtis, what I'd like to do is I'd like to share with you a very important aspect that gets ignored. And I do a lot of this in my coaching calls. And I know Rochelle does a lot of it in her recruiting um, calls with people that want to join us. And it's the three-step sales cycle. And I try to work backwards. Everybody knows they made the sale and they've raised their ROI. They're tickled. They got paid. And the step before that, step two, is they had to have appointments with, with uh, the public, with the people to come in. But I think the biggest difference between SOFA with this COVID going on is that we spend our time creating and generating interest in our workshops up front through our topics of what we have in our presenters that match up to those topics to get the public interested to create create those appointments. And like I said, instead of promoting your firm or your IMO, uh, okay, the member is promoting SOFA, the organization, as a nonprofit public benefit corporation, not promoting product, not promoting their firm, and the people love it. And so, yeah, we've gone from in-person to using uh, anytime meeting and Zoom and things like that. So um, I feel very good. I mean, you know, the, the tragedy that I think that's going on in the industry, and it's almost a little too late, it are the guys and gals that said, I'm going to sit this out. And now we have a second or third, I don't know, surge uh, in the pandemic, these people have lived on their savings, ran up their credit cards, thinking this thing is right around the corner. And I mean, this thing's, <laughs> as we all know, it just keeps going on and on and on. And in California, our hospitals are filling up. It's a mess. So one of the things that, that we like to get across to people is stick us in your planning for 2021 and get outside of your norm. And I know, Curtis, you and I have discussed this. These guys got to start putting new bait on the hook, and they've got to start figuring out how to fish a little bit different because the people that are still generating the qualified prospects, those are the people that are still getting their appointments, even though the medium has changed from being in person to, uh, say, Zoom or any anytime, any meeting on there. Well, I think you're absolutely right. I think that's one of the things that the pandemic has taught us uh, is, is pre-COVID, a lot of advisors maybe relied on one core marketing strategy, and that's what they did. And it they repeated it every month, and it produced results for them. And then we, we get into a pandemic like this, and all of a sudden, not everything works the way that it did before. And so I think it shed, shed a light on not only uh, does it make sense from a marketing standpoint to have multiple spokes in your marketing wheel, but also this is an opportunity to evolve. It's an opportunity to innovate. It's an opportunity to uh, test out and try new things to be able to generate that consistent flow of prospects. Without a uh, doubt. It, yeah. it reveals, this is something I've been doing in my coaching. It reveals the true marketability of the advisor. These guys and gals have got to become more flexible and look at different ways to get in front and create that interest of the prospect so they get the appointment and then their skills kick in and we know the rest of the story. Yeah, and I know we're going to be talking about some different ways to market this here shortly, but I know one question that probably a lot of people that are watching this have is, well, if I was doing workshops before, am I... Can I talk? Can I use my same presentation, or what presentation do I use? And if it's a new presentation, you know, is there a training process for this? But can can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, let me work backwards. You mentioned training process. It's called Ascension, and it is an online training program that follows up with my coaching. Uh, okay, and but, pff, I mean, it's there's nothing there. There's no mystery in it. It's easy to do, easy to learn. 
and we can have somebody up very, very quickly up and going. Now, as as far as the program uh, that is being presented in the workshops, I think we've got probably, I don't know, between 30 and 35. I know right now at the beginning of the year, we pull some in and we redo them and, and try to keep them current. It's funny, Ed Roeder and I were doing doing that yesterday on three of them. So we've got about 30 to 35. They're already compliant, ready to go. However, we also have a lot of SOFA members that have their own customized workshop that they do. Well, like everything else, compliance reigns, right? So right. what we ask them to do is send that in. We basically called, we sofa it and send it back to them. And if they're happy with that, we let them run with it because we've already approved it. We've got a copy on record and we're good. So whether someone wants to come in and dive right in and use our stuff or they want to send us theirs, we find a very happy medium where it's compliant and it does the trick for them. Okay, perfect. So they've got, they can, you know, either do modifications to their existing presentation or they can use one of the presentations that you've already put together, comply it, et cetera. Correct. So uh, right now you guys, it sounds like you've transitioned predominantly over to a virtual model to where you're doing Zoom, go to webinar, what have you. Without a doubt. So, so when that advisor gets done with their presentation, you, you know, what, what is the follow-up process? What does that look like? You know, how do they ultimately end up generating some appointments off of this? Well, they still, they still continue to reap the leads. One of the things that we teach them is to go into a partnership with a decision maker, maker that allowed them to come in. So let's use an example, Curtis. You are uh, the HR person of XYZ Financial. I came in there. You love the idea. And I'm going to say, okay, great. We're going to send uh, the marketing stuff to you. You need to get that out to all your employees. Okay. They'll come back. They'll respond. We'll build a class. We'll teach it. Uh, we will lay out at the end um, the opportunity for them to meet uh, with me. Again, I'm using this as an example. So they would meet with the speaker. Uh, they have questions. They present it. We gather the contact information. We set up an individual complimentary consultation with that person, and away we go. Okay, perfect. Now, what, one thing that I think is unique about uh, this program is let's, let's go back and let's use advisors doing workshops as an example. When they do a sure. workshop, they're doing workshops each month, right? And they keep paying and they keep advertising on it, and they repeat that over and over again. But I think one of the, the interesting and unique things about uh, SOFA is, as an example, let's say you get in with a HR manager. Let's say you get in with that business. Well, they have this requirement every single year, right? So you, they're they're going to need to satisfy this. Can you speak to a little bit about how this can really start to compound and build out? Oh, without a doubt. Going? September, October, uh, the end of November, the top of December, we have members that are going back to that decision maker who they've already worked with and they've built a relationship. And it's like an insurance guy getting renewals. Uh, they set up their schedule for the following year. We probably, I don't know, probably have 40% 40, 40 of our people that might have 30 or 40 workshops already booked for, the, for this year in 2021 going into that. When I was doing a lot of workshops oh God, a long time ago, I mean, it was my goal to have over 50 places to speak at before I ever finished the preceding year. So after the holiday and I was fresh and ready to go, I wasn't looking around trying to find momentum. I already had all these companies and places where I was going to go speak at. And so when you do SOFA, maybe two or three years and you really build up a lot of places and it's your territory and nobody can get into it, um, you're in. It's a great book of business, and you go in there year after year. I did uh, Qualcomm, uh, San Diego Gas and Electric. You know, I did those for like 11, 12, 13 years. I went in there every year. Now, again, Curtis, you talk about exciting. You go to a place like Qualcomm, it's got 24 buildings. I was averaging 60 people at a workshop for one topic, and and then my staff would schedule me you know, at 23 other places on the same workshop. So you start going, you know, you start thinking about that exponential opportunity. It's a, a pretty good footprint. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's significant growth in it. So that's probably one of the questions that I think a lot of people have is, okay, so there's there's a train, uh, there's a process, there's training available, the presentations are available. So then, how am I getting in front of these companies? How do I how do I get these things set up? So can you can you speak a little bit to some absolutely. of the ways that your advisors do that? Sure, we have two ways of doing it. Uh, one, uh, we teach them. It's, it's biblical. Teach a guy to fish and he eats all his life. Give a guy a fish, he eats one day. So we teach them how to maximize their relationships with their natural market. I can't tell you the amount of people that have a lot of friends and clients. Like I'm a native San Diegan. I've got probably like 22, 2300 clients now, but I've been in my career for 40 years. But when I look back, I probably got 80% of them through my sofa workshops. And I'm seeing those people all now all the time. So yeah, we teach you how to maximize your relationships. And since sofa is a 501c3, we're huge on altruism. And then as well, we want our natural market to be our advocates, where they work, where they worship, where they belong. So they nominate us into the decision makers and we get in to see them. That, without a doubt, is the number one way to do SOFA. Yet, we have another way of doing it, and that is a program uh, in our opportunity platform where we do all the work, okay, and then um, that member uh, pays SOFA headquarters. And like I said, we do all the work, we create the opportunity for them to get in. Now, with any meeting and zoom and with covid we created a, it's called olp online pivot where um we do everything right up to the point of the workshop and hand it over uh to that guy where he doesn't even come in and, and meet the decision maker i mean we've sold it right down to the jump start and then the, and then he goes in does the workshop get the leads and we fulfill the 404C for the guy's company that he speaks at, and it's good. I will say Absolutely. something, Curtis, and I know it's it's um, maybe an eye roller, but you know, I'm 40 and a half years in my career. SOFA is the greatest prospecting system out there, but it's like a broom, tennis racket, a bat, or a golf club. You have to swing it. We prepare our members, we get them ready for battle, but they still got to go into battle. It's not something that you look at and pay for to join and then do nothing. If you will, I'm trying to make that, that old saying, for those who expect nothing, they will not be disappointed. So it's, it's the same idea with SOFA. SOFA is an, it's a verb, it's an action item. People have to do it. And what we want them to do, Curtis, is we really want them to own their community. And then in the second phase of SOFA, we teach them how to build a team. We call it a clump. So that financial advisor is going to pick up on his team as another SOFA member, an estate planning attorney, an accountant, a realtor, a mortgage broker. And now you've got this team. Now think about that. Everybody has their own clients. They have their own natural market. And you put all that together on one group, Curtis, I get in at Qualcomm, you're my accountant, and guess what? You're getting into Qualcomm because of my efforts. You got a buddy who works at San Diego Gas and Electric, Semper Energy, our utility company here, that's got about 3,000 employees, great income down there. You get us in there, that means I get to follow you. And so the idea of building his team is a, Phenomenal way to to grow your business, which we call as no legs uh, prospecting. Okay, and I know we've got advisors from all over the country that are at different phases of their career, but I, you know, I think what I'm taking from this when I'm listening to you talk is that no matter where you're at geographically, no matter what phase of your career that you're in, if you want to market this and you want to do it, there's a number of different ways. This isn't a one size fit all, fits all deal. There's multiple ways that you can market this and utilize this in your community, correct? Yeah, it's not tube socks, one size fits all. Okay. 
So I, you know, I think probably one of the questions that a lot of our advisors have is, okay, well, let's say that I wanted to go and do this. Well, what are my expectations going forward? How long before I might have my first event set up? How long maybe does it take me to get proficient on the presentations and go through the training and be comfortable? All that. Can you speak a little bit to that for, you know, somebody that's wanting to get going? What they should, what they should expect? Well, I think the first thing in the expectation is we got to come to that damn fork in the road, right? Pre-COVID, after COVID, okay? Because it's night and day. Um, with COVID, okay, the ability is is of your natural market to to somehow through the internet, text, phone, whatever you want, to get in touch of that decision maker is not the same as I go to church and talk to my pastor. I go to work and talk to my HR person who's right there. I go to my men's club uh, at the golf course and I talk to the, the, the chapter president there or the program coordinator. During COVID, I think everybody would agree everything takes a little bit longer than expected. Yeah. Okay. Before COVID, it was cake again, but we only have two kinds of SOFA members. Those guys that come in and really learn how to do the system and stay with it and do it. And those guys are usually up probably within the month. And then we have people that look at it and that are constantly distracted. They're undisciplined. They're not focused. And they wonder why it's two or three months and they haven't gotten anywhere because they haven't applied the focus and the time to do it. I know that's kind of brutal, but that's absolutely the fact. We have about eight out of 10 people that dive into this thing, learn it, and are up and running and going. And then we usually have a couple of whiners that, you know, finally fess up later. They didn't have the time to do it. So we just wait on them to get going. Okay. So with this platform, is, is this something that should be a core strategy for somebody? Or is this something that if let's say they got marketing activities A and B going and they're looking to increase their capacity and get in front of more people, would this still work as a, okay, well, let's make this, you know, the third leg of our marketing stool to add in? I would say it would be the foundation of one's prospecting. You talked about one and two. I'd say, how about the foundation that's holding up one and two? Nothing, nothing is more powerful in our industry, uh, in our years of service, in our natural market, because Guess who become part of our natural market? All of our clients, our neighbors that know what we do, our friends that know what we do. Most of them all work somewhere, worship somewhere, and belong to somewhere. So as long as someone understands that, you know, it can explode. Because when you have advocates working for you and you have other people on your team, as I said, other professionals, and they're out there presenting themselves as members uh, versus um, advisors and lawyers and accountants and promoting their firm and their trust and their product, it's received tremendously. That's why we get invited in year after year, Curtis, to continue to do our workshops. So the ability to be up and running is totally dependent on how focused the, and the time that the person wants to put into it. Okay. Um, one thing that comes up when you talk about marketing is population density. How big of an area does that advisor live in? Uh, that can drive what type, what ways they market. When it comes to SOFA, is there a, you know, does it have, does the city that they're going to work in, does it have to be a minimum size or can you speak Not at to all. that a little bit? Okay. Not at all. Okay. I mean, you got to think about, you know, when you're talking about the logistics of a city or a town. Are there churches? Yes. Are there synagogues? Yes. Is there a union or two or three or five? Yes. Uh, if you went and spoke to that city, how many departments do they have? Probably over 20 uh, different departments. Okay. So when you drill it down between your natural market and your community and the ability of where all of those people go and work and they help open the door for you, you could be in Manhattan or you can be out in the sticks and you have a great opportunity. But I will say this, if you're way out in the suburbs or you're out in the country, 
I think absolutely it's common sense that you want to expand your radius so you have more people to see. Yeah. No, absolutely. I appreciate that. I mean, that's that, that's uh, that's a few definitely very good points. Can I let so, me jump in? I just thought of yeah. something I want to tell you. Yeah. I was playing in a golf tournament with a guy who used to work here a long time ago, and he was telling me how excited he was to because he got in to do a talk at Sony. And as everybody knows, that's a pretty darn big organization. Well, in San Diego at that time, they had about 5,000 employees. So I said to the guy, I, I said, uh, Vaughn, when you did your workshop there, how many people did you see? He goes, oh, I was really excited. There was about 40, 40 to 50 people there. And I got about 70% of the room full of leads. I said, well done. He goes, yeah, that was a great experience. And I went, what do you mean it was a great experience? Uh, when's the next workshop you're doing there? He goes, well, I already did, Sony. I said, that's 5,000 people minus 40 or 50. Do you know how many, I said, do you know how many departments there are? He goes, no. I said, you might want to check on that. Did you ever think of going to the HR that you started a relationship with to be introduced to all of the department heads? He goes, that's a good idea. So again, when I think back about it, Curtis, this guy grabbed it, ran with it, and didn't do any training. So it's so important that this is a core that goes inside of one's practice. Absolutely. So you've covered, uh, obviously, we've covered a lot of different topics um, over the course of our conversation. Um, you know, from your perspective, uh, with the advisors that are that are watching this presentation today, what would you say are the maybe the two, three, four core takeaways that you want to make sure that they have in, in, in looking at self as a potential option? Well, I think the first thing everybody needs to do is come clean with themselves and look at, and this is a strictly black and white question, Curtis, are you a good prospector based on your results, not your ego or what you think because you made a big sale last month? How many appointments are you getting a week? And those are scheduled. And then you have to drill it down after they're scheduled. How many are seen? Because by bringing SOFA into one's business and following the training and the coaching, an individual might be able to increase their appointments by three or four quality appointments a week. Now think about that. That could be 10 to 15 more quality appointments which raises your ROI, which, which uh, you keep your, you know, your closing numbers. I, I think that's good. So again, I, I think the reality, again, I go back to that three-step sales cycle. How many times on a daily basis have you reached people to get them excited about you generating and creating interest for them to give up their precious time to come and meet with you or you meet with them? That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing, Curtis, and I didn't know if you want to go into this or not, but, you know, one of the most exciting things we've got started now, we just rolled it out in this year, I mean, just rolled it out, is SOFA University. Uh, do you mind yes. if I go into that a minute? Yes, I actually, that was going to be my my follow-up on the on the base SOFA platform. But, yeah, if you could speak to SOFA University. Sure. Yes. You know, we talk about working in the community. and. Uh, I give all the credit in the world to, to Ed Roeder on our staff for bringing me this idea, and it just exploded in my mind after that. Now, think about this, Curtis. You're an entrepreneur, uh, okay? You're sucking wind right now in your business because you're not getting enough qualified prospects coming in on a daily basis that, that drives your business. Your ROI is going down. You're starting to get a little into panic mode. Your debt's going up. You're trying to figure out how not to let go of somebody on your staff. And a guy like me says to you, Curtis, what's your best one, two, and three topics that you know has always generated interest when you speak? And you go, well, it depends on, you know, what discipline you're in. He said, well, yeah, I got A, B, and C. Great. How would you like to become SOFA's adjunct instructor? We add you to our faculty. Think of that. An adjunct instructor with your topics, you bring them on to our financial literacy portal 
and you have that and all of a sudden you have exploded your message beyond your community. It can go out to anybody, anywhere. So let's say that I used Pfizer as an example and I'm in Newark, New Jersey. You with me on this? So yep. I go to their world headquarters and I put on a kick butt presentation. They love me. I'm gaining clients. I'm in Newark. It's in my community. And all of a sudden it's being shared to the air, to the other 18 offices across America. And I'm the instructor. Think of the possibilities of what that could do to my business. So we have opened up Sofa University. It's part of our opportunity platform. It's our newest program. And we have two types of presentations. I said to you, Curtis, you had, uh, in my example that you had uh, A, B, or C, you had three really terrific talks. Those are customized. You send those into Sofa. We Sofi them. We sign off. They're compliant, ready to go. You use them. Now think about that. You've been doing your workshops during COVID and you're presenting them live, aren't you? Through any meeting and Zoom and whatever. Do you realize now by putting them on our financial literacy portal that now somebody wakes up like me in the middle of the night and all of a sudden I want to, I got a hankering to, to listen to something and I go in and I listen to, you know, Curtis Hawks doing a terrific talk you know, and I, and I share it with my people at work or I share it with my neighbors or my friends or my family. We can go in and watch you, Curtis, and you're in bed or you're out somewhere else doing another workshop. So we're putting these on recorded and those are customized. Now, for someone who's a SOFA member, they as well can do that or it's what we call our drop and go. And we put together packages where we have a short snippet video, as you know, Curtis, our vid drops, uh -huh. and we match them up to our topics, uh, okay? And the the adjunct instructor can grab one of those from us and put it on there and take all the credit for it and have it recorded in, on that portal. So, and this is only step one of what we're going to be unfolding. I mean, we've got tons of ways to peel back the onion through this SOFA University. And again, it's a continuing process of messaging, branding, marketing, and promoting the member to gain access into places and have the availability of merchandising themselves and their knowledge to the public. And the public pays nothing to come in and watch these workshops. So we're really excited about that. Absolutely. And I, I think, you know, one of the things that I, I think is really uh, tied to SOFA is, is innovation. Uh, I mean, through this, as you've had a number of companies, marketing firms struggle to figure out how are we going to help these advisors, you guys have had a seamless transition and not only have you, and not only have you been able to produce results, but in addition to producing results, exactly what you're talking about self university you're continuing to innovate and continuing to have that forward thinking uh mindset with the advisors that you work with so well, thank um, you. yeah absolutely so jim i i really appreciate you taking the time out of your day i know you guys have a lot of stuff going on you've got a lot of advisors all over the country that you're working with so i appreciate you taking uh, a little bit of time today for our i'm's ascend event to kind of peel back the the curtain a little bit and give us some insight into who SOFA is, how you guys operate, what the opportunity is. And I, I hope all of you watching today, you see what we see at times, which is this is a great platform that can produce consistent results. And it's not just about generating prospects. It's about having a process that you can follow. And, you know, they say, why reinvent the real uh, failure? Follow the beaten path to success. Jim and his team, uh, over the years have developed a very, very good process and a very good system for generating a consistent flow of prospects. So if you've got some interest in this, you have some questions, reach out to your sales director over here at IMS. We're more than happy to chat with you about it, get a call set up with SOFA and uh, talk to you about how you can be uh, involved in this and how they can start making a positive impact in your business. So Jim, again, I, I appreciate the time today and thank you for being with us. Well, Curtis, 
Happy New Year to you. And I want to thank all the great people out there that support IAMS. And we, we'd love to talk to you. So thanks. Thanks, everybody. It was fun. Absolutely. Thanks, Jim. Bye-bye.